Hi, I'm Mark Cunningham with Grace Management. I'm recording this video in June in Denver. Now June, for most of our markets, is prime lease renewal season. If tenants are gonna move, they're gonna move in June. If we're gonna do a lease renewal, we're doing a lease renewal in June. So here's a couple pieces of guidance to keep in mind on how to make that lease renewal and rent increase process on a renewal that much easier. So guidance number one is this, have a non-renewal policy. If you decide not to renew for a tenant, why? they're probably gonna to wanna to know why. Now, in most states, you don't need to tell them why, but to protect yourself in case they come back in a fair housing issue, you wanna have an internal policy that you can point back to if need be to say, here's why we decided not to renew the tenant's lease. It wasn't because they were a member of this protected class. We didn't violate any housing policies. Here's why we didn't renew their lease. So we have an internal doc. It's simply our non-renewal policy. We don't share this with our clients but it's our internal doc should we ever need to refer to it. And it simply says this, except for fair housing lawsuit or complaints, Grace Management will, will not renew the lease agreement of any resident who has engaged in any of the following towards the agent, landlord, vendor, or any person associated with the agent. And then it lists the things in which cases we will not renew their lease. It, it sues or threatens to sue, demonstrates rude, obnoxious, hostile, or threatening behavior, including phone messages or email, demonstrates in our judgment, ongoing dissatisfaction with the property or the level of services provided, demonstrates non-compliance through lease violations or lease non-compliance. So now we have something that if we need to, we can go back to, say, to this and say, this is the reason we decided not to renew that individual's lease. Now the second piece of guidance is simply this. Consider why you're going to be increasing the rental rate because you are gonna be increasing the rental rate. We encourage you to do that. So what things should go into consideration? How do you decide how much to increase. Well, you want to look at a couple pieces of evidence, and here's just a couple to keep in mind. Number one, what's the current market rate? You need to know that. If the property is currently running for $900 a month, but the rental market rate today is $1,050, you need to know that piece of information. So number two, what's the length of tenancy in the last increase? Have they been in the property for 12 months or 12 years? And when was their last increase? So take that into consideration. What's the quality of the resident? Are they great tenants? They don't call you, they don't bother you, they pay their rent on time and they take care of their own maintenance and, and you just don't hear from them? Well, then maybe don't bump it up quite so high. And then lastly, what is the owner's objective? If you have an owner who's all about maximizing the rental rate every single month, then you're probably gonna wanna bump it a little bit higher. If you've got an owner who's less concerned about the income, is more concerned about having a long-term stable client, well, then you'll keep that rental rate down a little bit. But do an analysis based upon these things. And at the end of the day, no matter how you, how you put that out, we strongly recommend always doing some type of a rent increase, even if it's 10 bucks. You wanna train your residents to expect some type of a rent increase on an annual basis. Because I promise you, your landlord client had increased expenses over the last year. They had taxes that may have gone up. They had HOA dues that may have gone up. They had insurance expenses that may have gone up. So you have to increase the rent just to keep the owner even, just to offset the increases in the expenses that your owner client has had. So it's a great idea, even if it's, no, one, no tenant's gonna move over 10, 15, 20 bucks. Have some type of a rent increase to benefit your client. Number four, start the lease renewal process early. Don't wait until the same month. Start at least 90 days, that's what we do. We start 90 days prior to a lease expiring when we're reaching out to the tenant, finding out what their plans are. We wanna get this process done early. And the last is this, build a month-to-month -month fee increase into your original lease beforehand. So what may happen is the tenant just doesn't do anything. Their lease comes up for renewal, their lease expires, and in most states, if a lease expires, it just rolls month-to-month -month automatically. So if that lease expires, it becomes a month-to-month. -month. And what happens if the tenant doesn't sign a renewal and the tenant doesn't sign a notice to vacate? Well, what happens is the lease goes month-to-month. You may not want that lease to go month to month. Now, maybe you're okay with that, but even if you're okay with it, you wanna build in a built-in increase if that should happen. So that way, if the tenant does nothing, they don't sign a new lease, they don't, sign, they don't give you a notice to vacate, they just sit tight, fine, they can sit tight, but the rent is automatically gonna be going up by X percent or X dollars in the case of a month to month renewal. So put that language into your existing lease in the front end and keep it simple. We don't do full new lease packets on renewal. We send out a one-page DocuSign, click here and you're done on your lease renewal process. We've got enough things to deal with. 
that we want to keep this simple. Now, if a lot of things have changed in your lease over the last 12 months, maybe you do want to send out a whole new lease packet. But if things haven't changed, keep it simple. Do a one-page lease renewal. That's all you need to do. We've got a lot of things going on. Keeping the lease renewal process streamlined and easy will make your business easier and it'll make your owners a lot happier as well.